hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to another past HC exam question videos. We're going to do in this video is cover this HC exam question, which comes from the Evidence of Evolution chapter. And it says, so what I'll do first, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you have about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question, and then press play to, uh, to go over the answer. It says, A, a plant species found in the area immediately around Sydney has also been found in a small area in the Gibraltar range in the far north of New South Wales. This is the map of New South Wales. This is the Sydney region. This is the Gibraltar range. Predict what might happen to the in the two populations over the next five million years in terms of the Darwin's Wallace's theory of evolution. It's with three marks. And B, justify the use of vertebrate forelimbs as evidence to support the theory of evolution. It's also with three marks. All right, so pause the video and attempt the question. And then when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. Welcome back. As for the first part, it says predict. So, because of predict, one thing we already have to do is make a, make a prediction. Say what you think might, might, ha might happen. But not just say what you think might happen, but use facts to back it up. So, in this case, it says, use the term the Dar Darwin's Wallace's theory of evolution. So, you should also quickly explain what that actually is. So, what does that theory of evolution say should happen, or it happens in general? And then think of the specific example as well. So in this case, we should apply also the convergent evolution. Sorry, actually the divergent evolution. So talk about divergent evolution and how all this links together to make a prediction. So what I wrote is Darwin's and Wallace's theory of evolution predicts that species change over time to adapt to their changing environments. That's one of the predictions made by their theory of evolution. Then I also wrote the members of species within the, with the characteristics that are best suited to their environment. So the characteristics that, have best, that are best suited to their environment have an increased chance of survival. I wrote change, should be, should be chance. So well, yeah, that means that members of species with the characteristics that are best suited for their environment have an increased chance of survival. So, the, and then and hence, an increased chance of passing on their characteristics to the next generation. So now, okay, we talked about the theory of evolution that it says that things change over time. And this is why things change over time. Because the offspring that is of species that have the best adaptations will pass them on to the next generation. And over time, at least to new species. So this will get us one mark so far. And then we get marks for this. A plant species found in the two regions of New South Wales experiences different environments. So it is predicted that they would eventually evolve into different species through divergent evolution. So just by mentioning divergent evolution, and you, can have all, you could have also explained that a bit more, divergent evolution, and making the prediction that they would actually become different species. That would give you, give you two marks. So it would be a three more questions. That's three out of three. So yeah, make sure you make, to make that prediction, the correct prediction, which in this case, because they're actually the same species at the moment, but they're living far apart. So over millions of years, long time, they would eventually diverge. It should have been actually yeah, divergent evolution. So they actually become different species over long periods of time. And it's also important to actually talk about why, because they yeah, had divergent evolution, which is part of Darwin's Wallace's theory of evolution. And the next part was justify the use of vertebrate forelimbs as evidence to support the theory of evolution. So for that part, what you should have thought about is what exactly was the vertebrate forelimbs. So quickly mention what they are. And what you should then do is you should talk about how that supports. So how that is used to support and to show our shared ancestry. These are the important parts you should include. So what are the vertebrate forelimbs? How does it support the theory of evolution? And how can we use it to establish links between different species? So what I wrote is all vertebrates share a forelimb structure that consists of the same bones, including 
a pentadactyl limb. Should have been limb. So now we've said, okay, well, all vertebrates have this forelimb structure, which has the same bones and that pentadactyl limb, which is the five finger hand or limb. That's the first part, that gets you one mark. And then you, you would have written something like, these similarities hint at a common ancestor of all vertebrates. So because we have that structure in common, that hints at a common ancestor. And the next part is important, as anatomical similarities is considered a good evidence for evolution. So now we've established that we actually can use similarities between our structures to say that things are related. So I get some mark as well. And then you can talk about the differences of how they get used. The different vertebrates have since diverged from each other, which is evident when looking at the different uses of vertebrate forelimbs. For example, bats use them to fly, whereas humans use them to grip objects. So using that, we can also see, okay, well, we actually used to have a common ancestor, but we're quite different now because we have used these vertebrate forelimbs for different things. And that might get you a mark as well. So here we've got three marks out of three. You've mentioned that all vertebrates have this forelimb structure, and then you said what they actually are, the same bones and pentadectal limb. You said that we can use it because of our anatomic similarities is considered good evidence. We can use it to prove evolution and to show that we have a shared common ancestor. And you might have also mentioned why, what happened to our vertebrate forelimbs over time. Different species evolved and they use their for vertebrate forelimbs for different things, such as bats using them to fly and humans using them to group objects. And where these questions come from? They come from these different dot points. The first, so number A, question A, explain how Darwin's Wallace's theory of evolution by natural selection and isolation accounts for divergent and convergent evolution. So that was that. It was asking you about theory of evolution of Darwin and Wallace. And it was, you were meant to talk about divergent evolution. And that was from that dot point. And then the question B comes from these two dot points. Students will perform a first investigation or gather information from second sources to observe, analyze, and compare the structures and range of vertebrate forelimbs. That was part of that question, but also here the other one was describe using specific examples how the theory of evolution is supported by the following areas of study. Paleontology, including fossil uh, comparative anatomy. So here it says, okay, we can actually use comparative anatomy to show that there is similarities and there is a shared ancestry. And then this dot point says you need to actually know about what the what the vertebrate forelimbs actually are. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.